The Democratic ticket of John Edwards and John Kerry is right now in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. There you see Teresa Hines Kerry, wife of the Democratic nominee, addressing the throng in the background. One of her sons by uh, the late Senator John Hines of Pennsylvania. You see John Edwards also screen left just over her shoulder. Now, John Kerry's daughters also spoke lovingly of their dad during the recent Democratic convention. As a matter of fact, uh, also the Bush twins, uh, Jenna and Laura, also have made a splash on the campaign trail. Uh, Jenna and Barbara, I'm sorry. What, what am I saying here? On the campaign trail. But how will each child affect her father's campaign, and how will the campaign winning the White House affect the children themselves? For answers, we're going to turn to a man who studied the offspring of several presidents and who worked for the first President Bush, Doug Weed, the author of the book, All the President's Children. Oh, just program note, Doug and I worked together in that first Bush White House. It's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, Tony. Okay, so let's talk about the, the impact of being in a White House. Mess up kids, does it help them? What's it do? It messes them up. It messes up their identity. And uh, Jackie Kennedy actually studied this and concluded the most successful presidential children in history stayed as far away from the White House as they could. Really? Uh, of course, if you're growing up in the White House, and that was the case of, of John Jr. and Carolyn Kennedy, it was also the case of Amy Carter, and we saw it with Chelsea Clinton. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even, matter. Even if the children, like in the case of John Tyler, seven children were born, he left the White House. It doesn't matter if they're the son or the daughter, regardless of the age, of a president who's like an icon of their, their generation and their peer group, uh, it, it has an impact. So in other words, just like being the, the kid of any celebrity, the, the, especially a big, huge, globally <laughs> recognized celebrity, it's tough to get out of the shadow. And so what happens? Kids try to act up so they get their own identity? It, it is. It is. But it's even worse than, I mean, you, you can, there are books written about Marlon Brando's son or Tommy Lasorda's son. But the difference is, at, if you're a great actor, if you're a great scientist, if you're a great educator, you can go into business. If you're in business, you can go into the arts. If you're in the arts, you can go into science. But they all inevitably end end up back in the East Room of the White House where they get the Medal of Freedom from right. the President. And that's where the presidential kid starts. Yeah. So yes, the trauma is establishing your own identity and it impacts relationships. FDR had five kids, they had 19 marriages between them. It's hard to relate to other people when you don't know who you are. Well, you, you know, you mentioned Jackie Kennedy. You tried to keep her kids out of the spotlight. Carolyn Kennedy's had a very stable married life. Also, the Clintons tried to, to the best of their abilities to keep Chelsea Clinton as far out of the spotlight as possible. Is that a help? It is a help. I, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, when the Clintons came into office, they invited Jack in and sat her down. That was her advice, keep your daughter out of the limelight. Yeah. And uh, Chelsea, I interviewed 19 of the 27 living children. They all give high remarks, uh, uh, high marks for Chelsea. I think she's done a terrific job. And I wish her well, but it, it isn't over. And the, this trauma sometimes hits these kids so later So tell me some stories. Ooh. Study originally for George W. Bush. And uh, his dad had just won the White House. He was president-elect. We're sitting in his office. And he said, uh, what's going to happen to me? So I said, well, want me to do a memo on what happens to presidential kids? He says, yeah. And one of the first lessons I learned, Tony, which was pretty remarkable, is that in the public, if you're a namesake, you tend to be a high achiever, according to psychologists. But if your dad's the president, it's like a, a virtual curse. John Adams II dies an alcoholic at 31. Andrew Johnson Jr. at 26. William Henry Harrison Jr. at 35. They die from accidents. Andrew Jackson Jr. after a hunting accident. Calvin Coolidge Jr. at the age of 16. So I'm turning this study into George W. Bush. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but he, he beat the curse. Well, he apparently beat the curse but on the other hand, his father became president at a time that he was already a grown man. But, uh, but uh, what I'm telling you is it's the same. And, and this really? story, yes, William Henry Harrison had three adult children who died in the three consecutive years leading up to his election so, as president. So what are the present president's daughters telling you? Well, what we can learn from the, from the current uh, president's daughters, the Bush twins, is like their father, uh, their bit irreverent. A few days ago, we saw Jenna stick her tongue out at the world and at the media, and that's a good sign. It means, There's the picture. <laughs> yeah. It means they're not going to take this seriously, and they can't. And I had a conversation with their father in 1997 when he was leading in the polls. I said, well, you're going to run for president, aren't you? He said, I'm not going to do it. I said, well, you, you've got to, you're, you know, your brother in Florida, you, he said, I'm not going to do it, it would ruin my daughter's lives, they'd be in college. I said, well, did it ruin your life? And he said, no, it made my life. So, so maybe it'll make the lives of these twins, maybe they'll handle it the way their dad did. Well, we'll wish best luck of all of them. Okay, Doug Weed, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tony.